So uh, hi again, I'm Katerina and I'm uh, representing a big team here because this work is part of another uh, um, uh, create and innovate uh, Greek funded project. Uh, we are a lot of collaboration from Athena Research Center, Marina Sterikiu, Kutiva, Calabracido, Diamandidis, uh, Katifori, Ioannidis, and also uh, our colleagues from the psychology department from the National Kabodistan University in Athens, as well as the cultural manager uh, company uh, mentor. So, um, and the, in this uh, in this work, particularly, we deal with the first step of defining the requirements in in this in innovative but real experimental and I would say complex idea that I'll explain later on. Um, and of course, the idea of creating artworks with data is something that is not new. Here is I'm using one of the quotes of Lev Manovich, the the digital theorist, uh, which uh, in, in this work he he states that using visualization and uh, we need only to to see data and uh, and to explore and understand what it's in there it takes to be uh, to see or hear this data so uh, a lot of, of artists the last decade have used data coming either from the body or from the environment or different uh, sensors and also in uh, also for learning but in in the sense of uh, uh, creating interactive installation performances and so on. The idea, however, in this, uh, oops, it's not there. It's not moving to the next. Uh, sorry for that. Goodbye. Okay. So I'm going to uh, explain a little bit this idea of the, the project was called Transition to Aid, so bridging social issues with contemporary art. So um, we, the idea was how and if we can bridge social issues, local communities, uh, and, and, and mediate this through a data platform uh, in order to uh, to provide it to artists worldwide to uh, create some artworks. Uh, so what I'm explaining here, it's more in, in this, uh, in between uh, data and artistic creation. And we started with the question of what the artistic community need to transform data that convey probably a social issue and audiovisual art. And of course, this, this concept is not new because uh, art is always connected somehow with society and the societal issues. But in this sense, we wanted to be more particular about data because data are something that is numerical, it's quantitative perspective. So th th it's really a challenging question how we balance this um, uh, this uh, qu quantified, let's say, information that comes from the body or other uh, means into something that it's in comes as an inspiration, more or something that has a really meaningful for the for the artist, but also for the audience and um, and and the the, the citizens. And uh, the the second question is, if we want to facilitate these online tools, how we should make this data uh, useful through personification. Or so the first step was, uh, as we usually do in user-centered design, was to de to define this context, how we um, uh, how how artists work with data, and what are the the common obstacles in the process of using, uh, especially coming from the human body, and what would be their needs in in such an approach if they want to make something meaningful out of this data. By the way, this picture is one of the because now the the, the project is uh, is closed. But the, and this is one of the artworks that was uh, presented in uh, Lefsina in the oil factory. So uh, we used some user centered uh, methodology uh, methods. So the first one was um, an online participatory workshop. Uh, data and artistic creation. And we did this in the framework of an international um, uh, conference because it's a community that uh, uh, really transdisciplinary that in, incorporates computer scientists, performers, uh, music composi composers, choreographers, visual and sound artists that use 
movements and uh, bodily data. Uh, the reason that the, our two methods are online uh, is because this uh, research happened in the, um, during COVID. So uh, some to provide some statistics in this in this workshops that uh, uh, completed in two phases uh, uh, included eighteen artists and um, the majority of them have used the uh, uh, motion capture and motion sensing uh, data and some of them have used the other uh, bodily uh, data such as electrocephalogram, uh, ECG, EMG, and GSR. Uh, interesting, some of them answered that they don't know if they have used data in their uh, in their art books. That was an easy thing, uh, which again shows this complexity of the different ways that they, they incorporate data in their practice. Uh, and the second tool that we used was a question was a qu an online questionnaire that was most targeted to sound artists and music making artists, and it included parts about the profile, uh, the digital and artistic tools and possibly workflows um, that uh, they use for their artistic processes. Uh, also, we have, uh, there were some open questions about how this how they are inspired in this process and how they are driven by the social issues. In this questionnaire, we have 34 responses. The majority was were male, and we explained this, but the fact that uh, the, the music industry is, is male, male dominant, unfortunately, and also you can see also uh, an unbalanced um, uh, numbers in, in terms of age as well, so there are more, most of them male, 36 to, uh, but there are other papers explaining this better. Uh, and uh, most of uh, the participants were from Greece, but also from the Netherlands, Cyprus, Estonia, Ireland, Germany, Belgium. Um, so some um, interest uh, insight that we got from this, uh, from the workshop. First, the, the workshop was, had, had more the, the format of an open discussion. So we had the idea to share with them the concept of the, I'm checking also the time, sorry, uh, the concept of the of this idea of using data. Uh, and we had the chance to discuss and also provide them some activities such as creating their own mood board on Miro and um, and reflect on, on some examples that you shared with them. Uh, so in this step, we have to discuss more what are the pros and cons of wor working with data. So some of them, of course, were interactivity and multimodality of performance. The fact that you can have a, a, a feedback loop that uh, uh, has a more realistic expression. But on this, there, have, there are always some challenges such as how to make to the audience visible the fact that these data are not synthetic. So for example, when you something moving, how you understand that this is something that it's interaction and it's not just an animation. Uh, also, they mentioned some practical issues like technicality is a lack of knowledge, uh, finding a uh, low cost, but also trying to find which is the right um, equipment to uh, the right sensors for their artwork. Uh, the lack of knowledge also uh, from, from, from the artist, which is something that um, um, limitates somehow the, the agency and they create in this creative practice. Uh, also, they were highly concerned about um, how they use the data sets, cleaning, anonymizing, and they mentioned the problem of, of stuck in this phase and, and shift all the whole interest of the process into uh, cu cu curating actually these data sets rather than the idea itself. And also they were mentioned about, they were really concerned about ethical issues, privacy, agency to uh, the performance and so on. So um, in, in, in to the question that if a platform can mediate social issues, this is something that the participants really were enthusiastic about it as a, to, to have a platform that can inspire them. In, in the, and the reason also we used the, the in the, the second question our music, uh, we addressed this to music, a composer is that this idea of using samples that they can reuse is something that in this realm is is more um, uh, familiar than other types of uh, data, uh, and we discussed about how what to expect to find. Uh, um, so they mentioned abstract visualization, uh, and also uh, they would like to see some physiological data reaction of people to different uh, situation. Uh, 
but also they will they mentioned that it's really important to accompany this data with video photos voice documentaries to provide a context to where this data come from and what is the narrative behind it so this is just uh, one of the the, the slides that we used and the mirror mood boards that we created. Uh, what's the role of the human body? We started with a very generic idea, what it's data to you. And then we had an interest that, uh, in uh, insights like this one that sometime, this is another point that it was really uh, interesting was uh, this, uh, um, let's say different opinions, contradictions on real time versus pre-recorded data. Um, uh, because some of them see this as something that it makes the, the piece more alive. Some others think that there is so much obsession and they would like to have some pre-recorded data on the lab and work in their own time and so on. Uh, regarding the questionnaire, we had some questions regarding the background and tools. And in he uh, here it was, uh, we found that there is a, a diversity, both in the tools that they use, but also in their profile. Usually these people are people that they, uh, they don't really code, but they're using different kinds of software. They compose, some they are creating their own sounds, some they not. And um, the digital creative process, again, was something that was very difficult. Uh, although this was our initial, let's say, uh, ambition to, 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 to decode a, a little bit this process. Um, the sources of inspiration and also the idea of using data as raw material, but also as uh, inspiration. And this is also one screenshot of the of the platform that uh, is ready now. Um, regarding these social issues as inspiration, of course, most of them uh, uh, replied that uh, it's it's something that is always relevant. They're always inspired by social issues. They were really affected by COVID situation. And they and interestingly, they, they talk a lot about the environment and the city and also the need of physical space for the creative for the creative processes uh, and the need for collective and participatory approaches. Uh, and, and this is something that it's really uh, important because we are talking about digital artists, we're talking about people that create through software, they create with them, but again, it's uh, it, the, their, their process is something that needs to be grounded with a physical space and, and place. Um, now, regarding the discussion, uh, if we want to summarize the main outcomes, their biggest concern about creating such a platform was the ethics bias and interpretation, because we need to provide, as I said before, a narrative, and you need to contextualize this data to anonymize, but in uh, not providing just numbers, but on the other hand, uh, to not over-interpreting this data. Uh, another point was the skills of data labor and inspiration, and this is a common also uh, issue when it comes to digital and data art. There are many uh, small tasks that it, it comes with a come with a question that whose job is it anyway doing this, uh, or or uh, they want to do something but they like the skill and so on. And also the other was how to convey uh, because here we talked about bodily data, and with ecologists I I have to say here that we wanted to have an embodied uh, an, uh, aspect of the lived experiences. So they were more uh, uh, interested in doing, uh, it, it's a qualitative uh, research group. And um, at the end in the project, this is something that I go a little bit ahead. We used to so sociodrama, which is a, a method that the, 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 um, the participants act actually uh, this lived experience. So of course, uh, data is uh, something they they all can open a window to see something new, but also it can be uh, seen sometimes as a reduction of the lived experience. Of course, it's don't just a part of it. So um, this is this is the main question: how how to to provide this narrative, but without over interpreting the data. So. Um, the conclusion here is that something like this will be interesting to have, but of course we need a lot of we need a very specific process in order to be to create something that's um, uh, meaningful uh, and includes uh, for sure the collaboration of different uh, uh, of different actors, psychologists, researchers, artists, but also including the the locals, the citizens is uh, what was the the, the one of the concerns also also for for the artists. Um, these are some of the screens of the final project. 
And uh, you can see, you can find uh, some information about the project, because as I said, now we have uh, uh, built this platform and uh, we had a very interesting exhibition of sound artists and digital artists creating uh, artworks that were inspired by three themes of uh, LFC in a city. And thank you and uh, wow, thank you. Thank you. So any questions to Adelina? Uh, hi, thank you for the very interesting presentation. Uh, so I was wondering if you had uh, any discussions perhaps with the artists or other members about uh, different types of contexts and how this could influence the artistic representations and the overall process. Because I, I, as I understood it, we were talking about cases where the data might come from the artist's body, but also from other people's mm -hmm. bodies. Uh, that could be open data, but for example, Sometimes we, we work with uh, hospital patients and mm -hmm. uh, we use, for example, telemonitoring devices for hospital medical purposes. So these kind of artistic representations would be a nice way of giving the data back to the users, but have different connotations compared to a, a, another kind of a design project like visualizing environmental data in an office. So I was wondering if these kind of uh, nuances came up or uh, if you had any thoughts. Uh, well, we had lots of discussions with many artists for this work that was in the beginning for the requirements. And during this process now, as um, we completed this, we collected data from citizens, participants of Selefsina, but this is something to not describe in this work, but uh, in our papers, uh, we work together with psychologists. So syndrome is something that it's, like a role playing to discuss all together uh, social issues. So instead of just having what they were saying and how they were interacting, we had video, we had also GSR and temperature and heart rate. So all these data, uh, we wanted to see that, for example, if there were a moment of uh, there, is, there is a peak, for example, in, uh, in their reaction, this also translates through the data and vice versa. Um, so we, this, get, this data, Together with with the analysis of the psychologist, were given to uh, to to art to the artists, sound and digital visual artists, to create three artworks for Elisina. I'm giving this example because this is it's very specific. And again, in this example, we have of course in, in the in the phase of uh, formative and summative evaluation. Uh, about the platform, how they use this data. And it's very interesting to see that they give them the same data, the same narrative, and the way that they use this data is completely different. Also, another point that was interesting here was that this data was coll was um, collected from Elefsinians and it was about Elefsina city. And some of the artists were abroad, some were from Berlin or other cities, and they tried somehow to relate by going to a city that was, I don't know, a similar maybe to Elefsina. Uh, for example, we had an artist from Paris and uh, she said that Paris, because it, in, in Elefsina we identified in very specific uh, issues, environmental, labor issues, refugees and uh, refugee and migration. And um, she found that Paris was not really relevant. So she, in her artwork, she combined some of this data with uh, Istanbul, that where she was from for example so every artist and this is this was a challenge also as you said context because there are many contexts in this data in a way one was the socio drama session the other was the city of Sina, which was the reference in this discussion and of course it, where, and when the artists create although we try to decode this in order to provide something that's very useful and and meaningful each one of them works in a very different situation and and there's another context on top of that, which is their imagination, their memories, their, the way they work. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's a combination of individual sense making and the uh, empathy data. But uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. So, we have time for just one quick question, please. Thank you, Katerina. It was a very interesting talk. Uh, just probably my own problem, I reflect a little bit. I really got confused by the terminology you use uh, and how you define data. Mm. Now, um, if you think about it, uh, data in, in our world is uh, 
any digital information in terms and uh, any computing device is a sequence of zeros and one bits. Now, if you uh, video uh, like you are in the area of uh, dancing and performance, okay, if you take a video, that video is data. Mm -hmm. The representation of this data, a meaningful representation of data, it makes you think that that's not data anymore, probably. Mm -hmm. And what you're talking about data is now additional, perhaps added uh, uh, information relating to the original event, which probably was an analog experience, by the way, for, for the audience who were actually mm -hmm. phys physically present. So I think there is a need for a clear definition of what you mean data, because when I, uh, and I give you an example of this, uh, the any picture, any image you take with a mobile device is a sequence of bits. Yes. But then it's not, that's irrelevant for us. It's just a picture, an image, an image of somebody dancing, for instance, or a video, a sequence of images. So uh, the, and I can transform that. I was assisting last week to a, a conference. Somebody was taking images from a gallery, from a museum, and they were doing a spectral analysis and creating representation, new representations of those images. Mm -hmm. So there was a digital transformation of the original yeah. perception of the of the yeah. artistic event. And the same perhaps applies to you. You take yeah. the, uh, I don't know, physiological data or whatever other additional information of your dancers and then try to make meaning out of them. So I think here, you I, we need a clear definition of these terms okay. because I, I got it completely. No, no, it's, thank you so much for this comment because it's something that we discussed a lot also with the psychologist and it, it's true. I mean, uh, it, um, maybe it will be more clear if we refer to physiological data or signals that this is true. Uh, but to give you an example, even for the video, and this is something that we discussed a lot with psychologists, because for psychologists, uh, the notes are data, of course. And it was in these sociodrama sessions that uh, this is something described in another paper that we reference here. Uh, even the, the, there were differences between the notes of people that live the experience and the video. Even the, so uh, again, we are, we are very aware of this limitation, but I think, uh, thank you for doing this comment because uh, in the AI realm, now we, we, we say data and we're probably thinking about uh, CSV files or uh, databases, but of course for, for the humanities, uh, it, uh, also it's data, notes are data and videos are data. So yeah, okay. Thank you, Sanayana. Thank you.